All right, welcome to chapter 18, Local Prospecting. Now in this chapter, we are going to focus on ways to reach out to local business owners and explain to them what we have for them and why it's so unique. Now we are gonna have a strong selling point because we can only get this to one business owner in that local area. So it's a first come, first serve basis. Now remember, you don't have to target just that one city that you're going after. For example, plumbers do work within about 60 miles of where they're located. There's plumbers coming out here from so far away that it's crazy that they're even making any money off the phone call. Now they are so desperate, they will drive so far and work for so cheap, trust me. Now it's important that you totally understand what you are selling and to whom. You really want to research the correct business to contact. You are looking for businesses that are really hungry for growth, that's it. I'm going to walk you through a simple prospecting model that I put together and show you how you can convert potential clients into paying clients to lease your digital asset packages. So let's go ahead and get started. Now with local prospecting, action plus time plus hard work equals massive amounts of money. There's no easy way around this. You really are going to have to be creative if you want to be successful in this type of marketing. You have to target each business with a custom pitch so you catch them right off the bat. So what do prospects want? All they really want is a push button, no work, simple system that has no responsibility and they want the end result without the middle. So remember this. Now what people want in their mind is something that's exciting, that has higher social status, that's a new opportunity, or that sounds unique, hot, or sexy. So remember that too when you're pitching this product as it's gonna follow under all of these if you pitch it correctly. So yeah, let's face it, local business owners suck. They are hard to manage with all their expectations. You get them amazing results and they most likely will end up ditching you down the line. And they also think that they can just go and hire an in-house marketer who knows as much as you do and that will do the same job. Yet you gotta remember that small businesses still spent over 37 billion in online marketing last year. Now that's a lot of money, and they're also on track to spend 42 billion this year. So this industry is not going away as far as lead generation. So it's a great time to snag a piece of the lead generation pie. Your goal is to make your clients never want to stop paying you. And what's cool is that you're just selling them what they want, which is results. So you don't have to sell them SEO, you can sell them leads, and there's a complete different strategy. So leads mean results, SEO means promises. Now, how can you stand out from all the other marketers out there trying to pitch to these clients? First of all, you're selling them leads, a system that actually works. Now, you can get creative and you can sell them on a cost per call, cost per appointment, or you could just lease the site out for a monthly fee, which is my favorite to do. And also another strategy is to go and try and work out a deal where you get a percentage of each sale that you get from the lead. Now, it's kind of cool because they know that you're only going to make money if they make money. So it's a win-win situation. And it's also a lot easier to sell than just traditional SEO promises. So you basically have created your digital asset. Now the next step is to go get it leased. Once the website is getting a lot of traffic and you're capturing a lot of leads, you become the boss. You don't have to work for another client. You simply can just lease this out and almost forget about it besides just sending those monthly reports. So remember that, it's really cool. You don't have clients calling you at 10 at night or sending you text messages in the morning saying they need this thing done right now. It's more of a relieving factor when you become your own boss. So that's why I really like this leasing model. Now you gotta remember, you are selling SEO real estate. It shouldn't be a hard sell at all, you know? This is a good example. It's not hard selling apartments across from Staples Center. You're in a premier location and the demand is really high. Now, what you're doing with this leasing model is you have property online where all the customers are looking. I'm talking on the Google searches. Now most SEOs don't get clients because they need to sell trust testimonials, prior ranking skills, 
smooth selling skills, and also authority. So with this model, you don't have to break any of those barriers down. You already have an asset that is pumping out results. So they could jump on board and start getting phone calls tomorrow. Now, you want to find clients that are ranking poorly in Google. So what I do to go find prospects, I just go over to Google and type a quick Google search for like a plumber in a city. And I'll go back to about page two or three, check on the websites there. And if I see a bad website, I'll get that phone number down and just make a huge list of potential clients that I could either call or email. And most importantly, networking is the key to success with the leasing model. You'd be surprised the type of people you meet at the meetup.com events or the BNI groups, or even my favorite is just going and hanging out at a coffee shop. So many people walk in and out and you'll start forming a network once they start understanding what you do and what you're selling. You really just have to get creative and make your own path with this whole model. So remember that. I mean, I can give you the blueprint, but you have to go out there and actually do it and do it in your own way. Now getting them on the phone. So business owners barely answer the phone. You have to go through a gatekeeper and gatekeepers are usually secretaries or their employees who decide if the boss gets the phone call or not. And you got to remember too, that these gatekeepers are getting bombarded all day long with marketing calls. The bigger the area they cover, the more they are marketed to and the more phone calls are coming in bothering them. So you have to approach from a different level. So if I was talking to a gatekeeper, I would probably do something like this. Hey, my name is Greg. I realize you're probably pretty busy. So just give me two seconds. Now I do marketing for dentists and I wanted to see if I could talk to who is in charge of your marketing a little bit later today or maybe tomorrow. So if we can break this down a little bit, the two things to take away, I told them just give me two seconds. So they already know that it's not going to be a long phone call. And also, can I talk to someone later today or tomorrow? So they can write my phone number down and give it to the person in charge. Now you got to really look at it from the prospective's point. They are always thinking, when is this marketer going to stop talking? Well, what's cool with that last pitch I gave is I said in two seconds, I will stop talking. So they're going to relax a little bit more and open up. And they're also going to be thinking, is this call going to take a long time or what? How long do I have to stay on the phone for? If they realize that you're just going to waste their time, they're going to get off the phone as soon as possible. So a good solution would be to ask for a good time to call back when they're not too busy. Now with all the phone calls they get from all these random marketers, they go something like this. You know, hello, my name is Greg and I work for the number one SEO service. I'm a salesman and I was wondering if you have time to talk about all our marketing service packages. Now, if you say something like that, it's just going to get you instantly ignored. Business owners are literally socially conditioned to hang up the phone when a telemarketer calls. So just don't sound like a telemarketer. Sound like someone who just has this special asset and that you're just looking for someone to take it off your hands. Okay, so here are some things that you want to do instead of what I just talked about. You want to casually throw in that they're the perfect solution for this business you have. Explain that you specialize in marketing and have a website that is already built and ranked in the top spots in Google and it's getting leads every day from it and you're looking to get rid of it or find someone who could benefit from these leads and you're looking also to find whoever's in charge of all the marketing decisions. Now remember, all business owners care about is results and getting an ROI. So. The more leads you bring them, the more ROI they're going to get and the more happier they're going to be. You need to really understand their problems and what they care about to be successful and to work with them and to form a good relationship with them. What you want to do is highlight what they care about, talk about it, and tell them that you can solve their problems. It's likely going to get their attention right away. Because you really got to put yourself in their shoes. Here's what most business owners think. They think about making money, they think about getting more exposure, they think about being easier to find in advertising solutions, and they also think about making a safe investment with an ROI. 
Now here are the business owner's problems. Their competitions are ahead of them as far as marketing. They're falling behind as far as demand on the market and becoming obsolete. They're losing their ability to be a long-term business, so they need a short-term solution quickly. And they're also hard to find because they're not advertising correctly and they're losing money testing and experimenting on advertisement because of it. So I want you to notice that in the last couple slides, I never talked about ranking high in Google at all. I talked about the results, which is leads. And I also didn't talk about a good backlinking strategy or an effective SEO solution or anything really technical. Because when we talk to these business owners, we must smother them with their cares and their problems when we are selling to them and not the technical jargons of SEO. Think about it. All they want is ROI, then let's talk about ROI and, and present a solution really quickly and instantly. It's like magic. Don't talk about all the technical stuff. Just stick with the simplicity of what you're selling, which is leasing leads, and you'll be fine. So how to smother business owners? Just don't sell to them at all. Just tell them what you're doing and be real with them. First of all, just don't sell to them. You want to get their feelings going. Make them kind of worried, excited, a little upset that they're not demanded, number one. And you want to present a solution quickly that's going to solve all their cares and problems with the snap of a button. So what you also could do is run some Facebook ads and set up a landing page explaining the digital asset that you own. And you could really target a specific niche. Like if you have a digital asset that's a plumber in a certain area, you could target on Facebook plumbers Facebook accounts and just flow an ad right in front of them whenever they're on Facebook. So they see this kind of cool offer and click into it and then they find you. And for landing pages, I use the plugin Profit Builders. It's great. Go check it out. You can create a landing page within about 10 minutes. And then on the landing page, obviously explain how they could contact you and get this set up right away. Another way to reach out to prospects is just open your eyes when you're driving through town, like at a gas station or a coffee shop. So when you see a company truck, just approach them with a pre-made proposal that you have in your car that just lays out the basics of the leasing site that you have. A face-to-face -face is such a great impression that they're really going to value you a lot more if they first meet you face to face. So remember too, you really have to be weird about this and really unique, you know? This isn't traditional marketing services. This is a very, very unique product that you're pitching to them. And there's only one of them. So it's really not traditional. It's just a really special offer that they could jump into. So just some words of advice when you're doing this type of leasing, just carve your own path to success, you know? Don't go out there and trying to follow what everyone else is doing. Find some unique niche and just go into it and test it out. Just test, test, test. Do what no one else is doing. You know, this stuff really works. And just remember that lead generation is a multi-million dollar business and it's growing every year. So if you can be perceived as the expert in lead generation in your local area, you're going to be doing business for a really long time. Now for the yellow pages, everyone goes to yp.com. It's pretty much a gold mine for SEO prospecting. Now what's cool is the people in here are already spending money. They're putting ads on the yellow page website to try and get some leads going. And a lot of these people are spending about $350 a month just to get the first couple positions in the ads. Now yellow page ads are kind of old school and the people paying for ads here are more of the old school clients. So they're going to be a lot more difficult to convert, but if you present it in the correct way, it could work out greatly. A lot of these people haven't adopted to Google AdWords or just kind of scared of it and want to stay away from it. So you really have to talk to them in simple terms. Don't get too technical. Just tell them how you can get leads to them right away and as soon as possible. Now another strategy is video marketing emails. Basically, you're just gonna create a short Camtasia video explaining the website and show how it's getting leads. Like go over to Google, type in a couple keywords and show the website and tell them they could get this property if they talk to you. 
Once they see those rankings live, their eyes are gonna light up and they're gonna be really excited to see what you offer. And then you're just gonna show them the offer in the end of the video and have a button saying to contact you. Now, lastly, if you have no luck finding someone to lease this website out and you're just sitting there with it and not knowing what to do, what you could do is find someone set up the call forwarding with a whisper that tells them that the lead came from you and just start forwarding someone random a phone call for about a month. So they're going to get maybe 10 to 15 calls and they're going to keep hearing this, you know, this call came in from Greg Montoya as the whisper. And they're going to start to think who is Greg Montoya. So when you actually reach out to them via email or phone call, they're going to know who you are and want to know how you're getting them leads and what and what this whole system is all about. And that's where you just come in and just be like, "Hey, I'm a professional internet marketer and I specialize in lead generation, and for the last month I've just been sending you free leads." And if you want to find out more about what I'm doing, let's talk and see if we can work together. Now, there's one last concept I want you to really know and not do or duplicate. Never tell a prospective client that you have recorded the phone calls or have done anything as far as recording and a phone call. That will raise so many questions with them and I advise you not to do it. So never bring up recorded phone calls. In fact, don't record their phone calls at all because it's an option with these software packages, but just don't do it. Only record the number that the call is only record the number that the call is being forwarded to. Now that's it for this chapter. I appreciate you listening in and let's move on to the next.